Our next panelist is uh, Dr. Moses, who is the founder of the Algebra Project, a national nonprofit organization that uses mathematics as an organizational tool to ensure quality public school education for every child in America. The project has built upon more than two decades of research and curriculum development around mathematics education for low income and low performing communities. Dr. Moses. So, hi everybody. I was an invited guest. <laughs> and I showed up. And I was told I would be given 10 minutes. So if you don't mind, I'm going to try and take my 10 minutes. And I want to start with a story. It's the spring of 1963. I'm on the witness stand in the Greenville Federal District Court. My lawyer is John Doerr. He's Burke Marshall's assistant. Burke Marshall is the civil rights attorney for the Justice Department. His boss is Robert Kennedy. President Kennedy is still alive. In front of me is a courtroom packed with sharecroppers. Standing around the wall, Judge Clayton is the federal district judge. He leans over and asks me a question. Why, he wants to know, are you taking illiterates down to register to vote? Sharecropper illiteracy was the subtext of the right to vote. It happened in Mississippi in 1875. In 1875, Democrats, by terror and violence, took over the Mississippi legislature and William Alexander Percy became the Speaker of the House for just one term to oversee the impeachment of Adelbert Ames, the Republican governor. Percy had one policy statement that he wanted to get into the articles of impeachment. The Republicans had voted money for the education of the freed slaves. Percy saw that that statement was changed, that that money was used to build the railroads in the Mississippi Delta to start the process of sharecropping and sharecropper education. So sharecropper education was the legacy of this country Every reporter that came up to me during those times asked me the same question. He said, Bob, why are your people so apathetic? So I had to think about that. What did it mean to say that these sharecroppers were apathetic? And what were we going to do to actually look at them and say to them, where is your energy? So what it turned out was that the meeting place turned out to be the place where we could tap into the energy of the sharecroppers. That is, we figured out how to run a meeting so that sharecroppers could participate in that meeting and decide on little things that they wanted to do about their condition and then go out and do them. So the meeting place became the place where sharecroppers, what you call self-help, happened. I called it the beginning of an earned insurgency. They had to be insurgents against the state of Mississippi, and they had to earn their insurgency. They had to earn it facing economic deprivation, but also facing bullets and murder. They weren't alone. 
the 1957 Civil Rights Act actually gave us what I called our legal crawl space. Mississippi could lock us up. I was in jail five different times in five different counties. But they couldn't throw the key away. The Justice Department, every time I got locked up, came down and turned that jailhouse key. And that was the only reason we were able to actually organize in Mississippi. Because there was a little piece of federal legislation that allowed us to actually do that work. So if we're talking about what's internal and what's external, what is it that people have to do to help themselves, and what the government has to do to help those who are trying to help themselves, we should look at that example. Now with the algebra project, the issue has changed from, and what makes algebra a force around which we can organize, because in the 1960s, we were using the right to vote as an organizing tool to get political access. So what we are doing now is using algebra and math as an organizing tool to get educational and economic access. What allows us to do that is the shift from industrial technology to information age technology. This is a huge shift. As you know, industrial technologies mechanized physical work. Information age technologies have nothing to do with that. They organize what we think about. And so we have the idea of a knowledge economy and the idea of critical thinking, and that kids have to be educated into 21st century jobs. So the algebra project has taken on this idea that we can use math because of this shift, because with the industrial technologies, reading and writing literacies were the requirements for citizenship and access to economics. There is a new requirement because of information age technologies. That's a quantitative literacy requirement. And so the algebra project has taken on how is it that we're going to mount with the young people that we've been talking about here and earned insurgency around their education to do what everybody says they don't want to do. So I began this work, I'm a father, my wife and I have four children, and my job in the family was to do the math. My wife did the language arts. And I started out with my kids as they went into the first and second grades, because I looked at the school and we wanted them in public schools, but we wanted the schools to work for them. So.